can you talk a little bit about subtext? Because I think something that's something that's so missing from so many screenplays in today's world, my my screenplays included, that it's very on the nose, <laughs> very on the nose kind of stuff. And it's like, I don't like you. I don't like you either. And that's kind of it, as opposed to doing it with a look or, you know, many other different techniques. Can you talk a little bit about subtext in your characters or in your in your stories in general? Yeah, uh, we don't write with subtext because that's extra. We charge no. extra. For that. <laughs> you know, it's funny because um, we've been mostly comedy writers for sure. our career, and I think that um, humor is often subtext. Um, yeah. You know, you can't. Uh, what's what, when a character says something funny or does something funny when there's something funny that happens in your screenplay, it can't just be two characters saying what's on the surface, saying what's on their mind. It has to be sort of a clash, I think, of, of deeply held views. And, um, you know, subtext is, is incredibly important because your characters are, are talking and doing things in a movie, but um, they're often not, not saying what they really think and they're often not doing what they really wanna do. So, um, you know, tone is so important and um, all the things sort of behind the writing are incredibly important. Uh, and we probably, I think, um, you know, this is something that when you're on your 10th draft, as we often are, this is when you really start discovering subtext and where we're layering, layering those things into your screenplay starts happening. And it's, and it's like what you say, you know, if you're just handing in your first draft, you're not going to have the subtext unless you're some crazy genius. Mm -hmm. It's going to take a while to figure that out and find that. Um, so I think also that a lot of subtext is about this distinction between what a character wants and what a character needs. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if your character's goal is, for example, we were talking about Family Man earlier, this character, what he wanted was just to get back to his old life, mm -hmm. to physically return to New York and live in his apartment and have his job. That's what that character wanted. But that's not what that character needed. And so for a lot of the time in that movie, as he's talking with his wife in New Jersey, played by Taylor Leone, he's having conversations where he's still very much focused in the conversation, in the dialogue, on wanting to get back to the life that he had before. But this is not what that character needed. And ultimately, the subtext becomes text, where in the third act of the movie, the character starts speaking very directly to what they need. And uh, that's, that's when, uh, that's when the magic when the happens. happens. That's, that's when, when the magic happens. happens. Well, if I, if I, if, and if I might have an example of, of a little bit of subtext in Family Man, where he goes shopping and he gets that suit when he starts mm -hmm. trying on that suit. Sure. And then when she's like, we can't afford that. And all of a sudden it becomes so much more than about the suit. Obviously there's so many more deeper feelings and it. This comes out in the argument, what it really is about. But Correct. originally it was just like, I want to buy the suit. Well, like, you can't buy the suit. Like it's not about the suit. <laughs> was that a good example? That's a great example. Yeah. That's a, that again, that movie is all about priorities and how you prioritize personal relationships, family, and career aspirations and ambition. And that's what the suit scene is about. He wants his $2,000 suit, he feels like a better man. <laughs> But he's, but is he a better man? Yeah. It is so. It's well, such a ridiculous. Co when he says that, I feel like cringing. When he says like, I feel like a better man wearing this. <laughs> like that says so much about his character and where he is in his life at that moment in time. Like I'm like, if I'm wearing this, I feel like a better man. Like that's, oof, says volumes. And yet I have to say, when you put on a two thousand dollar suit, I ha yes. You feel, I don't know if you feel like a better man, but you feel something. You feel something. <laughs> but here's the thing. There's something in that fabric. When we were There's writing that scene, yeah, yeah. one of us was a father. And the truth of being a father is you never get that suit. No. You're all, right? I mean, no. it's like um, you're, you're sort of always giving up on the suit. Look, so look I, I think it was it was sort of you know anticipated what it's going to be like for us. Well, like, like I always say, if you look behind me, I have a life-size Yoda. Yeah, sitting in my in my office. 
I bought that when I was single before I met my wife. Can you imagine the conversation right now of me walking to my wife and going, babe, I think, uh, I think I need a life-size Yoda. And, uh, I know the kids have summer camp coming up, but I, I but I need a life size Yoda. It's an incredible she, value. It's an it's gonna only appreciate in time. It's an investment, really. <laughs> like, can you imagine having these conversations? So, I, anytime I meet single guys, I'm like, dude, buy any crazy thing you right. want. Now, that <laughs> life now, time to do it. That life size Hulk that you've been wanting that costs six thousand dollars on eBay, buy it now because that will not have that will not have happened in about You'll five years. Never get years. that. Never happen. Yeah. Never never. How much it, was the Yoda? The Yoda when I bought it was like 300 400 bucks at the time. It has you probably, probably sell it for thousands now. It's probably now in the range of 800 to 1000. I check every like 3 or 4 years I'll check eBay just to see where it's at. <laughs> but it's probably like 800 to 1000 bucks now probably. It's from 1999. It was from the Phantom Menace release. It was the one that was in Blockbusters and they only had like in all the Blockbusters it was like a giveaway of Blockbusters and I bought it. And now it's part of the family. I'll never get rid of it. it you know, my girls were raised with Uncle Yoda. I mean, it's part of the thing. <laughs> But the point is, that is my suit. Like, I can't have – if you look behind right. me, there's, like, statues of, like, the Hulk and Wolverine yeah. and stuff. They all cost, like, three, $400 a piece. Again, before children came. Right. I was yeah. married, right. but before children – now when the kids BC. come, it's, it's – yeah, it's – yeah, before BC. Yes, yeah, before children. I, cannot, I can't have that con- – I can't go to Comic-Con anymore and go, babe, I, I, I'm going to spend 600 bucks at Comic-Con. <laughs> I'm going to do that. That conversation won't happen. So yeah. – we have skewed off the topic, but this is yeah. a life lesson for everybody listening. <laughs> All, right. Any young writers listening, buy crazy stuff now. Buy it now. If you take your nothing system. from this podcast, <laughs> take that. We have take. just – eBay is now $20,000 richer because of us. <laughs> Someone's buying a life-size Hulk as we speak. <laughs> By the way, if you – 